Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Beaton Heritage Conservation District open house where we will be discussing the proposed Beaton Heritage Conservation District plan. My name is Madeline Gibson. I'm a senior policy planner with the town of New Tecumseh and I'm helping to administer this project. Hi, everyone. I'm Vanessa. I'm with the town as well and I'm the heritage lead, also helping to administer the project. Good morning, my name is Utemaya Jambatissa. I'm with Food Tent Planning and Design, helping uh, bring together the, the guidelines for the, the Heritage District. And with me, uh, I have... Hi, my name is Annie Veyer. I'm from ASI, and uh, we are the consultants uh, assisting with the, the, the heritage uh, research and um, uh, historical significance of the project. And we also have my name's Christina Martins and I'm also with ASI. Great. So this uh, open house will commence with a presentation by Photon Planning. Um, during that presentation, we're going to ask that everybody uh, please turn off their webcams and their microphones so we don't have any interruptions. And then we'll have questions and answers to follow from any of the members of the public who decide to join us during that time. Take it away, Ute. Great. Thank you, Madeline. I will share my screen now. Can you see it? We can. Okay, perfect. I, I usually don't go full screen for some reason. It, it, it doesn't react well with uh, uh, the Zoom platform. Um, but anyway, uh, welcome to, to the presentation. We, uh, between ASI and FOTEN, we have put together um, uh, a brief presentation, uh, maybe 30, 45 minute presentation that will cover really, will provide you a little bit of a background of where we have been and how um, uh, the, this, the whole study commenced. Followed by, by the, the work done through, through, through our second phase uh, and, uh, and just a brief overview of the implementation strategies that will ensure that the, the guidelines and the overall vision of uh, conserving the district will be uh, a, a reality in the future. Um, so our first part, part A, uh, will be a, a brief introduction where we have been and the objectives followed by uh, ASI's explanation and work on, on the, the statement of significance and, and the heritage attributes that are found within, within the, the, the new um, heritage uh, district uh, boundary. So um, if, if you recall, if we had attended our, our meetings back in 2018, as well as 2019, um, the, 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 the intent of, um, of, of conducting or implementing a, um, an HCD, a Heritage Conservation District for the, for the downtown core of, uh, of Beaton was to really um, work in collaboration with residents to implement a boundary that was defensible. And, and by defensible and, and, and uh, cohesive, uh, we mean a, a boundary that really encompasses encompasses what through history became the heart of what Beaton is. Um, we are currently in the process of implementing and developing with your input, uh, a set of guidelines that guide uh, uh, property owners on how they can manage their own uh, buildings. You can see in, in yellow, the, 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 the area boundary and uh, the ACD plan really it identifies and protects the cultural heritage resources within this boundary in, accor in accordance with the Ontario Heritage Act and industry-based principles and practices which are contained in the guideline that we are preparing. Um, the study process uh, really took place throughout three phases. Um, we, we conducted a preliminary, through in step one, a preliminary uh, background study of, of the policy review and an inventory of contributing and supporting properties, which is something Annie and um, Christina will take you through. That all happened in the fall of, the, of 2019. We had uh, stakeholders meetings with some of you 
We also had an online survey. We had common boards and our first Ethereum community meeting. During phase two, we we now went into a more detail once we understood what what components form there or what properties and the status of the properties form and were contained within the hcd boundary we started to develop a set of uh, district objectives policies and guidelines and and we started to structure a guideline document that will be able to to provide uh not only uh town staff but property owners with clear directions on what to do with your properties. Um, that part of the process was conducted during the winter of 2019 and the spring of 2020. That included a meeting with the steering committee right before we, we went into a lockdown, as well as numerous staff meetings on, on the actual nuts and bolts of the actual guidelines and the implementation strategy. And finally, we are uh, um, really, uh, uh, conducting wrapping up step three where we're coming back to to you with a more well-defined uh, guideline uh, document uh, with a well-defined implementation document where um, there's not only a clear direction on how the heritage permit process will work from your perspective but also how the different uh, little tweaks in different bylaws and at the internal level of the of the town have to happen so the guidelines can be fully implemented. So um, I will let uh, ASI now take us through through the extensive um, uh, heritage history work and assessment of uh, properties so you can better understand what's contained within the boundary and, and the reasons of, of their significance. Thank you, Uta. Um, so as Uta said, I'm going to walk you through some of the background research and what makes Beaton significant and why it is important to uh, protect this HCD and the area within it. Uh, as part of the HCD study phase, we developed a statement of significance for the HCD. This was based on extensive historical research, site visits, uh, uh, conversations with local historians, property owners, as well as our steering committee and staff. So the lands within the proposed HCD boundary are centered on the historical and present day commercial core of Beaton. Uh, they are comprised of uh, transitional but cohesive mixed use areas featuring a range of residential, institutional and commercial properties on Main Street West and Center Street North. Um, this area is of historical value as it contains a concentration of heritage resources and groupings of elements that are associated with Beaton's earliest and most significant town builders, such as um, Robert Clark and D.A. Jones. Uh, it's also associated with early industries, which were critical to Beaton's development, such as agriculture, as well as, as apiculture. It's also associated with pivotal events, which, one of which was the Great Fire of 1892. That fire dramatically impacted the physical fabric of the community and has led to what the Danton Corps of Beaton looks like today. Um, it does, it's also associated with enduring traditions and events such as the Beaton Fall Fair, as well as all sorts of community gatherings happening along Main Street and around the town hall and the fairgrounds, which strongly contribute to the social fabric of the area. Next slide, Uta, please. Um, as part of the HCD Statement of Significance, we also developed key heritage attributes that really um, are a like a physical demonstration of what is of importance and which what remains uh, within the, the HCD boundary. So such attributes include buildings and landscape features associated with DA Jones that are associated with a, a period of prosperity which has been identified as being significant. So that was both before and after the fire of 1892. And also buildings and landscapes uh, and landscape features associated with Beaton's agricultural history. Uh, another key attribute is the representative range of buildings that were needed to support a self-sufficient 19th century committee from a community, from residential buildings to commercial, institutional, um, all with a consistent style, construction materials, and composition. Um, heritage attributes also include landmark properties such as the Town Hall, the Muddy Waters, the former Orange Lodge, uh, the Trinity United Church, there's the former Traders Bank, as well as the former location of the Queen's Hotel, which is now a vacant lot, and the fairgrounds. 
Another key attribute, of course, is the historical downtown, uh, the commercial streetscape along um, uh, Main Street uh, with there's a consistent building height, consistent materiality and public realm amenities such as those lovely cast iron light standards. Um, Center Street as a residential streetscape, including its mature tree canopy is also a key attribute. Uh, we also have views that were identified as significant, such as views of the Town Hall, the Jones Block, and the rest of the historical downtown commercial core as one enters the community from Main Street, along Main Street. Um, and a key attribute as well as all the mature trees along Center Street and within and surrounding the fairgrounds, as well as the network of historically established open spaces and recreational areas that form a community and civic core, which are defined by the town hall, the fairgrounds, the memor memorial arena pro property, including the Beaton Cenotaph, as well as the DA Jones Library. Um, the proposed boundary of the HCD, which Uta showed us a bit earlier, is a result of the information collected and analyzed as part of the study phase, which included uh, a comprehensive com community consultation process. So it includes the historical and present day commercial core of Beaton along Main Street West, as well as a mixed use area along Center Street. So this area includes houses, but it also includes a church, a former bank, a former orange lodge, a former butcher shop. So this was historically provided the transition between the commercial core as well as the, the and the purely uh, residential area further north along Center Street. Uh, the HCD boundary also includes the, the wonderful civic core that we described earlier, which acts as a, a community gathering place, such as the core and the fairgrounds a bit north. And next slide, please. Um, so we note that not every property or building with an HCD is going to be of historical or heritage value. So part of our work is to identify those properties that embody or represent one of the one or more of the key attributes that I presented a few slides back. Um, so if they represent some of these key attributes, we identify them as contributing properties. But then there are also properties that do not identify that do not embody or represent these attributes, and we call those supporting properties. What we need to understand is that both contributing and supporting properties are designated as part of the HCD under Part 5 of the Ontario Heritage Act because they fall within the boundary. But the HCD plan and guidelines uh, will approach these properties differently, whether if they have, um, have key attributes or whether they don't. And Uta will talk a bit more about this uh, a little bit later. But to differentiate between the two, what we did was taking the property research for the individual properties and matching them up against the key attributes that we identified as part of the statement of significance. So for example, two Main Street West is a contributing property because it was built and occupied by DA Jones. It was built in 1894 during that period of prosperity that was identified as being significant and is also part of the historical downtown commercial core. On the other hand, the supporting property, uh, for example, 29 Main Street West was identified as supporting as opposed to contributing because it was not built during that period of prosperity. It's not associated with uh, a known person or event or period of significance. It's not part of one of those significant areas within uh, historical areas within the HCD and it's also not a landmark. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Um, so we have then further classified the contributing properties to aid in the, the development of guidelines for the HCD. So first we have contributing residential properties, which are properties that were uh, built as original homes for people residing in Beaton. Uh, they're primarily located along Center Street, while there's a, a few uh, individual properties along Main Street, east and west of the commercial core. And Conservation policies and guidelines for these types of properties should be considered when uh, making alterations or additions, uh, including regular maintenance or changes to windows, roofs, materials, and as well as front and side yard landscaping that can be seen from, from the public right away. Uh, next slide is uh, contributing non-residential -resi properties. So these include buildings that were originally built for com commercial, institutional, or for a mixed use of, of purposes. Uh, they mainly comprise Beaton's downtown commercial core and are primarily located along Main Street. And conservation policies and guidelines should be considered when making alterations 
or additions to these properties, including regular maintenance or changes to storefronts, exterior walls, roofs, materials, uh, windows, doors, and signage, especially for the commercial properties. Uh, <clears throat> our next group of properties are our supporting properties. And these properties, as explained, uh, they don't directly represent a heritage value of the HTD, but they do have the potential to support the character of the HTD should these properties be altered or built upon. So that's why we call them supporting properties. These may include um, properties that have one or more buildings. They may be vacant properties or they may be currently used as parking. Um, so policies and guidelines that address alterations, changes, or demolition, demolition of supporting properties um, include uh, including developments and in infill in terms of street walls, building heights, design materials, roofing, setbacks, facade patterns, and, and features and are just some of those examples of uh, how these policies and guidelines can uh, guide any changes to these supporting properties. Um, and then we have the public realm, which is the place, the space where communities come together. So these places can include open spaces, they can include streetscapes as well as civic buildings. So within this particular HCD, the public realm is comprised of the streetscapes along Main Street West, Center Street North, as well as a second street. We have the fairgrounds. Uh, there's also the civic quarrio with the library, the, uh, the arena, the cenotaph and the park. And conservation policies and guidelines should be considered for these properties when making any kind of alter alterations or additions. Next slide, please. So together, uh, these different types of properties, contributing properties, whether residential or mixed use or institutional, or supporting properties, or public realm, all form the beaten HCD. Um, so now I'll turn it back to Uta, who will go through a discussion of policies and guidelines for the HCD and its uh, different types of properties. Oh, I, Uta, I think you're still muted. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. So based on, on, on the work done from uh, the heritage perspective by, by the ASI team, our team started to, to craft the, 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 the objectives, the definitions, the principles, policies, and ultimately the, the guidelines that will help each land owner decide how and when and, and what the best approaches are to, to um, either retrofit, upgrade, uh, preserve, or restore their own, their own buildings. So um, the, the, the con content of the guidelines were really um, um, uh, divided into two key uh, sections. The first one will be, um, uh, uh, really a breakdown of the, the type of properties that Annie uh, took us through. So there are specific guidelines pertaining to contributing properties. Further down within the contributing property uh, bucket, you have guidelines for um, residential properties, which are obviously very different from uh, commercial or mixed use buildings, such as uh, the main core uh, main street buildings, which have a storefronts or, um, or uh, a church. Then you will have guidelines that pertain more to supporting properties. They, they, they are completely set of guidelines. They, they, they open the opportunity and then they have different uh, elements that tackle maybe potential um, uh, additions or demolitions or a new construction like the corner of a center and main. And then we, we focus on the streetscapes. The streetscapes obviously have a, a range of options, streets, street trees, and the preservation of the character of, of Center Street and Main Street have a strategy that's mainly implemented by, by the town. But there's also a lot to be said to how the future civic core will evolve as, as the new arena comes in and how that relates to, to Main Street. To, to the fairgrounds and obviously the fairgrounds and, and what how the fairgrounds can continue to build on, on their legacy. So from the implementation perspective, we have elements that will help uh, um, uh, the town update their plans and policies to, to ensure that all the land use policies and the bylaws uh, make sense with each other and, and they support it, 
each other. There's no contradictory uh, elements that guide the development and, and, and uh, um, upgrade of buildings in the future. There's a heritage permit process that we will take you through that really explains landowners and, and property uh, owners what they have to do when they are proposing uh, anything uh, related to, to their buildings. There are um, educational programs and incentive programs that the, the town is currently um, studying and that will be put uh, forward for council uh, uh, approval. So um, uh, not only the city staff, town staff, but also uh, landowners, you will have uh, access to um, other um, network, larger network heritage tools that can help you navigate um, ideas and how to, to address uh, changes to your, your building. Um, so I, I, I think um, part of the, the, the big uh, objectives, part of the elements that we were able to um, distill from all the heritage uh, uh, background information done to date was the craftment of, uh, of a series of a statement of, objects, of objectives that uh, really frame the, the policies and the guidelines that were developed. And it's obvious from all the work done and, and from the physical reality of the town that uh, one of the, 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 the key tenets of this uh, work was to conserve Beaton's unique settlement pattern and town layout, which is defined by the, the 19th century residential and commercial development of the lands owned by, by uh, early entrepreneurs, like Annie was mentioning Robert Clark or DA Jones. And they are mainly clustered in uh, along Main Street West and Center Street North. Uh, within this boundary, it's, it's important to ensure the protection and conservation of the important heritage resources that really make uh, Beaton unique in its character and quality. And also, it's important to use the guidelines as a tool that will allow you to still allow and manage change, but in a manner that reinforces and rather than detracts from the area district character, which is basically characterized by that three-story commercial block buildings on, on Main Street and by the two-story re two residential um, uh, building uh, buildings on Center Street. And I will add by the very, very important core, a uh, civic core that's formed by, by the arena, the library, and further north by, by the fairgrounds. Um, so when it comes to uh, uh, contributive properties, we, we are crafting guidelines and policies that will retain and conserve the enhancement of the district features, whether it's a residential or a commercial building. We, we are putting forward guidelines and, and objectives, um, uh, policies to protect and enhance the, the intersection of Center Street North and Main Street West as the North East corner develops and, and really starts forming a new kind of a, a landmark gateway into the core of, of, of Main Street. We also looking into crafting guidelines that will enhance and, and, and conserve the, the, the 19th century residential character of Center Street. From the supporting properties public realm process, we are implementing policies that will allow um, property owners to, 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 to uh, propose new development, alterations or infill. Uh, all done in, in a matter that really conserves and enhances the character of the streetscape. So you, you start to get an idea that how, how this specific building fits over the overall sense of, 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 of that main street or, or center street has to do more with the, the proposal and, and the, the way things look from the streetscape, from, from the public view. And, and, and under this specific bracket, we are also looking to ensure that new development also supports that is a specific character. So it's not, not diminishing a, and it's not a detriment to the overall character of the area. So I, I, I will uh, switch to, to, to Christina.
to help us a little bit with the definitions with our, which are very specific in terms of, uh, of heritage and conservation of places. So Christina. Thank you. So the conservation policies and guidelines which were created for Beaton and are specific to the Beaton Heritage Conservation District come out of uh, best practices in heritage and use definitions and principles that come from federal guidance as well as provincial guidance. So in uh, the federal context there's a uh, an umbrella definition for conservation. And you'll see in the policies and guidelines the term um, conserve used. And what that is referring to is this umbrella term, which says conservation is any action or process that is working towards safeguarding the heritage attributes or the character defining elements of a historic place. And its goal is to retain the heritage value and extend the physical life. So so um, then within conservation, there are three um, further actions that could happen. And um, often people think of um, heritage and think of restoration. And that is one way that um, a historic place could be maintained is through restoration and restoration is when um, layers from the past are revealed or based on documentary evidence they're added back to the property. We also have um, under this umbrella term of conservation uh, preservation which is geared more at protecting and maintaining and stabilizing what's already there and then rehabilitation which is taking the property and and making something else possible from from what is there while still protecting the historic place. So it might be um, continuing uh, the use that is there currently or enabling a uh, compatible contemporary use. Go to the next slide. So in the provincial context, these definitions are expanded upon in the principle for the conservation of historic properties. And this comes from guidance from the Ministry of Heritage, Tourism, Sport and Culture Industries. And there's eight principles that they've set out for conservation. Uh, they range in scope from preservation to uh, through rehabilitation and restoration. So the first principle is respecting documentary evidence. So if a property was to be restored, it shouldn't be based on conjecture. It should be based on a photograph or evidence of what that property looked like in the past uh, if new elements are being added. Respect for original location is the next principle. And that's um, the where the goal is to keep an existing building in its location um, and that a building only gets moved if there's no other means of saving that building. The next principle is respect for historic materials. Um, so this is where we're, we're going to preserve and take care of, um, repair the existing building materials uh, or landscape elements and finishes and only replace them when it's absolutely necessary. The next principle is respect for original fabric. And so that we, we demonstrate that respect for the original components of a building by repairing with similar materials. So if it was originally a wood porch, we would build with wood, we would use um, metal in a context that metal was used. Um, so understanding the, the original fabric and repairing with similar materials. Um, we also have a principle of respect for the building's history, uh, which is, is uh, linked to that respect for documentary evidence, um, where you're going to restore um, based on something known um, and not restore to uh, a single period at the expense of other periods. So we understand that buildings change over time. And so you don't want to remove something that over time has become important to the building. Reversibility is where um, when alterations are being made to a property, it uh, should then be done in such a way that you could let the property return to its original condition. So if an addition is being made, you don't want to do it in such a way that it uh, destroys the integrity 
integrity of the existing building um, if it should be returned to its former state again in the future. Legibility is uh, when you are doing new work, making it distinguishable from old. And maintenance is that continual process of keeping everything um, at, a, at a, a standard where the building can continue to operate so that uh, it, in the future, uh, major projects are not required. I'll turn it back to you, Uta. Sorry, thank you, Christina. And so based on, on, on the objectives and definitions and principles um, uh, explained by, by Christina, we now um, crafting, crafted the design principles that will really inform uh, the guidelines. And, and many of these uh, principles really uh, look into, into encouraging, I, I, I will say from, from the easiest strategy to the most complicated strategy with the easiest of, of just really encouraging being uh, uh, proactive in the way uh, people maintains their buildings. Um, preservation is our first uh, priority. Um, once once uh, a, a good proactive maintenance of buildings and, and strategies is, is implemented in how you upkeep your property preservation, it's, it's, it becomes uh, easier. Um, we, we believe that preservation of, of a property, it's, it's, it, it relates in, in, in pays attention to the, the original intent of a building and allows the building to, to function and, and uh, express its uh, time and place of, of design and development in, in its original form without the need of having to add or detract from it. All, although there are many other strategies as, as Christina uh, suggested, um, preservation will be the easiest in the current context. Uh, and that includes repair before replacement, obviously, uh, reflect the predominant character which is, is um, it's, uh, in, in the context of Main Street, is, is a, a two-story commercial brick-faced um, uh, elements. And uh, most important than anything, I think, uh, within the heritage uh, conservation and preservation of building is to, to ensure that once we, we, you go the route of adding uh, new elements, you reference but no mimic. So you don't end up creating a, a, a full, full uh, heritage or a full main street, which is uh, in, in, runs the risk of becoming a more of a themed uh, main street than a, 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 a main street that reflects the times and places of, of its evolution. And, and obviously a change is, is a welcome strategy of how our communities morph and evolved and, and the last thing we want to do is to 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 um, freeze a specific uh, place in time and, and becoming a, a theme park of sorts uh, by not uh, uh, following uh, these strategies. So um, the policies then um, the, the main policies and each each bucket of uh, contributing residential, contributory um, uh, uh, mixed use institutional as well as supporting uh, properties have their own policies, but in, 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 in a larger over, uh, over encompassing strategy, we are proposing that all contributing properties shall be maintained. Alterations and additions to the contributing and supporting properties shall be based on an understanding of the property and its contribution to the general overall uh, uh, district and how it sits on its own street. The alteration or additions to contributing and supporting uh, properties shall also be physically and visually compatible and subordinate in the case of, of, of additions to the distinguished distinguishable features of the of the cultural elements of, of the district. So um, I will take you through a series of um, diagrams that really kind of better and illustrate um, how we are envisioning what components of the different uh, contributing, supporting and public rail elements we are looking at crafting the guidelines so we, we help you as a land 
property owner to, to better understand what to do with your property. So when, when we speak of contributing residential properties, such as uh, the wonderful homes located on, on Center Street North, we're looking at, at guide you in, into the, into the um, uh, maintenance, preservation, or, or addition of anything that's been seen from the street. So in this instance, we are illustrating a, a corner property, residential property, where um, we will develop guidelines that um, tell you what to do with roof and parapets if, if they are changed, exterior walls, uh, porches and, and porticos, verandas and balconies, windows and doors, chimneys, uh, most important and, and, and it has a, a, an enormous impact and especially in residential settings is the, the width and, and uh, proportion of your driveways and location of garages, whether they are new or, or retrofit. Uh, additions, additions that can be seen from the street in the, in the context of a corner uh, property, um, the, the addition to the back will be seen from one street and, and, and that will be an important factor that we, we will look into ensuring that that addition into the back is not, not prohibited, but it will obviously have to fit it within that streetscape. Um, we also have a, a quick uh, key map that you can refer back if you if you open this presentation on, on the studies website, you can refer back to the properties that have been identified as residential, contributing residential. So when we, we go to the contributing non-residential now, we are, we're dealing with primarily um, the commercial uh, blocks uh, along Main Street West. Um, they are really more focused in this instance on, on storefronts. Uh, storefronts have a, a series of elements that go into forming a storefront and, and they are very, very characteristic uh, elements and ways of doing a storefront that uh, represent um, uh, Main Street, Ontario. Uh, they are described by, by elements, so they go from uh, base panels to transom windows, canopies, awnings, signs. We also speak about how, how the, the, the rhythm and, and the elements of the upper floor um, um, from materiality to windows to be uh, preserved in, in, in case of uh, new windows coming in or in case of a uh, new uh, um, uh, work is done in, in the upper floors. There's, there's an innate um, rhythm and articulation that uh, we all love in, 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 in Main Street, Ontario buildings where, where there's an emphasis to verticality, uh, street uh, windows and doors are usually, and even the, 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 the dimension of, of each storefront calls or, 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 or has a reference into verticality. So your windows are usually more of on a vertical plane than a horizontal plane that will be more of a postmodern architecture. Um, there's also possibility to, on their current zoning, to add floors, but what does that mean and to, onto Main Street and how they have to be maybe set back so the addition doesn't overwhelm your experience when you're walking on, on Main Street. And once again, you will have a map that you can refer to, to the properties that have been identified as contributing non-residential. In that mix, you also will have uh, the town hall or the church, but primarily they, they are um, illustrated through, through the uh, commercial mixed use um, blocks located uh, in, in this solid uh, blue here. Another uh, really, really important component is, is the supporting property element. Um, there is a whole range of, of, of uh, different conditions and, and variety within the supporting property uh, category. So you have anything from existing uh, residential that were you know, converted into, into commercial uses to vacant lots. And I think um, most important than anything will be to craft the guidelines that allow future investment in the community leverage that investment in the community because you do need um, a, a, a framework and a, a, to, to welcome new, new changes, but in a way that you know, further enhances and contributes 
contributes to, to the, the overall character, specifically of the corner of uh, Center and Main Street. And, and we chose to tackle this specific site instead of, of choosing an easier one to just really start thinking of how a future building under current zoning could come in is still respect the, the same rhythm and pattern that you see of existing uh, Main Street uh, commercial buildings. You, you see a pattern on the height of the podium, you see a, high, uh, a pattern on the height of the awnings, a pattern on, on the division of, of, the, of the storefronts, the separation, but also on how the future building could potentially come in and address existing heritage buildings to, to the side or to the back and how their overall circulation, uh, access to parking and loading can function in the context of Main Street. So you don't end up with the loading and driveways off Main Street maybe, but maybe off the side road. Um, and finally, in the context of the, of the public realm, we chose to illustrate the, the, the civic center. We believe that, the, the, the park, the, the lawn bowling and, and the cenotaph will continue to operate in, in their current shape and form. And they are intrinsic elements into how people, especially now during COVID times, uh, enjoy the town. But we, we also are very aware of, of the initiative to, to replace the current uh, arena. And we believe that the, our guidelines, set of uh, guidelines can really contribute to, to start envisioning and start um, the discussion on how this future building will actually sit within the context of Main Street, the library, the town hall, but also how it sits in the context of, of its interface with um, the park and the fairgrounds. So it's not just a, a one good facade uh, future development that looks onto, onto Main Street. It's basically a three good phase uh, development, future development that will have to ensure that they, there's um, uh, the preservation of a pedestrian connection from Main Street all the way to back to the fairgrounds. There is a, 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 a recognition and transition into the cenotaph. There is uh, current uh, existing conditions like a site drainage. There is um, sidewalks that will still need to connect you back to the fairgrounds. And there is a, um, a con on compatibility between the materiality and the massing of the future uh, arena and, and the library and the town halls. So those are um, all uh, elements that are exploring our guidelines and put forward. Uh, finally, one is, is, is how you manage um, parking, how you hide it from, from or minimize its exposure from Main Street, but also how, what do you do with that parking lot when you are not really fully using it? Can it be used to a, for a farmer's market or can be used to other purposes when, when there is no, no uh, games, for example, in place? So um, the series of diagrams kind of uh, hopefully help illustrate the elements that we are including in our uh, overall set of guidelines. Um, the guidelines obviously are more uh, um, text uh, written. There are not as many illustrations, but hopefully this provides you with a good glimpse at what we are looking at as far as providing guidance into the future. Um, and then I, the last chapter of that specific document really deals with implementation. And many of your questions have really gravitated more about the practicality and what you do and how you go about implementing a process and what you do as a property owner to go through the process. So the process that we have been uh, crafting and uh, is currently uh, being further uh, considered by, by town staff and eventually will come to council for approval. It's, it's basically a, a three bucket uh, heritage uh, permit process. Um, so for all properties within the heritage uh, district, we, we, we are proposing to have three different uh, um, uh, streams. So you won't need a, a heritage permit uh, 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 issue to you if you are doing basic maintenance work on your property. 
many of your comments throughout our uh, initial stakeholder consultations were on things that were just basic good upkeeping of properties that um, in our opinion that don't merit uh, the need of, 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 of an uh, extra layer of uh, uh, planning processes so that it's all pertaining to um, examples may include um, interior renovation work, installation of utilities, Installation or replacement of eavesdrops or downpipes, minor repairs to the street fronting elements of a building, repairs to the internal side, a side, a facade side that is not being seen from from the street, uh, repainting of stucco or wood or metal, uh, construction of residential rear deck or patios. Uh, repaving of driveways, uh, soft landscape at the front, uh, uh, at your front um, um, yard, or replacement of non-original roofing materials, for example. Once, once we, we get into more extensive uh, construction work, we are proposing to implement two, two different planning or heritage permit streams. One will be in which in the, the proposed changes and, and renovations to a specific um, uh, uh, property have, uh, will have a positive or no, really no impact into the overall uh, heritage character of the, of the district. Uh, the, the character as described in, in this uh, presentation and containing in the actual document. So they may include uh, alterations or replacement of the street fronting elements like um, uh, materials or the creating brickwork or window surroundings. There's alterations to storefronts, alterations to signage, painting of exterior brick surfaces, for example, or addition of solar panels that are not being seen from, from, from the streets. Um, all these elements will really just have to go through a uh, planning staff approval. The, the, you submit your application to, to planning staff. Uh, there's a review and um, the, the owner then is notified on, on, on the decision of the application. So you, you either get a yes, in which case you get your permit or a no, and then you get the chance to present your arguments and your reasons to council. A major heritage permit is really intended to just apply to major renovation or additions to, to an area and, and even new construction. So for example, the corner of Center Street and Main Street will, in our opinion, qualify as a major heritage permit because you are really intrinsically changing uh, hopefully in, 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 in a manner that fits the, the, the character of the area, the entire downtown area. So examples may include alterations to buildings or structures, um, additions, relocation, demolition, construction of new buildings, replacement of storefronts in their entirety, or new and increasing uh, increased parking areas. All elements that really uh, could potentially completely change the, the character of, of downtown Beaton. In this instance, uh, the property owner will submit their application to, to, to planning staff. Uh, staff reviews the application. It's um, the, 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 the application goes for uh, in front of council and council either decides to, to support the, the, the proposal of what, whatever is at hand or it doesn't support that proposal, in which case the property owner has the, the recourse to take the case to the local planning appeal tribunal which is a, a sort of um, judiciary uh, court that deals with all uh, planning matters. This heritage permit pr process in a nutshell is just the ambition to, to ensure that whatever is coming down the pipeline as far as, as, as changes within the district continue to reflect all the work and all the, the carefulness that um, people has taken into re, uh, retrofitting or, or upgrading their buildings. This is not to supplement or, or this is not to replace 
existing planning processes. So for example, even if you, you get your uh, heritage permit process, you still have to go through, through building and through planning uh, through, uh, to, to get your building construction permit. So it's, it's, it's just one additional level which is um, the internally that the town is looking into integrating into the, 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 the already established process. So it's not an, an added uh, um, submission to a different department. It's not an added um, um, submission that may in, you know, further encumber um, the process of submitting for, for construction approval. Um, another key element of the implementation as mentioned at the beginning of the presentation is that um, we wanted to ensure that um, we presented the town with a whole set of, of, of changes to existing bylaws and, and planning documents that uh, will ensure that every single policy speaks to, to the intent of what we are putting forward today. So the implementation component of the guidelines that we are preparing will have um, a, a an explanation of the heritage permit review, what's the approval process and what's the work required to go through the approval process. We are also spelling out the roles and responsibilities from the town staff, from the heritage advisory committee to council and property owners. We are spelling out a set of grants and financial assistance that can um, go into helping property owners implement some of their ideas to to upgrade their buildings from the CIP program uh, to signs and, and awning and light grants and many other examples used throughout throughout the pro province that the, eventually the council will have to, to decide on which ones uh, are better suited for the, for the new to concept and, and beach and context to be implemented. Uh, where to get help is a wonderful uh, compendium that um, points to resources in, in the world of, uh, of heritage uh, um, uh, conservation. Um, there were a series of land use policies that needed to be uh, uh, amended, including uh, the official plan amendment, uh, urban design guidelines amendment, and a series of zoning bylaw amendments that included the fence and bylaw uh, assigned by law amendments that really looked into a more um, fine grain main street sign, for example, strategy that's not really um, encompassed in the current sign bylaw, which is, speaks more to the big box, larger uh, commercial uh, sign signage uh, components. And finally, uh, more for, for the town's uh, benefit, there's um, a comp component on, on training staff network, which is, uh, is really important uh, through a network of uh, municipalities and um, heritage conservation supporting groups, as well as uh, property standards uh, by law amendments. So um, this basically wraps up in, into one single uh, document that provides you with directions on what to do with your specific building, as well as their resources and the process that uh, has to be followed to, to get a heritage uh, approval. Um, and that basically concludes our presentation for today. Uh, we'll um, be presenting uh, tonight at seven o'clock once more, and uh, we'll be glad to take any questions in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ute, really appreciate that great presentation. So unfortunately we don't have members of the public who are joining us now, but I do know that members are watching via the YouTube live stream. Uh, so if you have any questions at all for the team here on this project, feel free to email us at any time and we'd be happy to answer those questions. So I think that we'll go off the live stream and soon I'll just wait for Leah your command.